Hello everybody, it's me, Walter the Journey Boy, back with Console Conversations. Now, it's been a while since the last episode. Uh, we had a channel hiatus, and it's been a longer hiatus for Console Conversations. Episode 5 was quite a while ago, but we're finally back uh, with Noah for Life, who was again on the special. That's a trend you're going to yeah. be noticing a lot. Um, and today, we're going to be counting down our top 10 most hated, least favorite, is a way of putting it, least favorite games of all time. I've, did, I've done favorite, so why not, you know? Um, yeah. So, uh, we both have 10 games prepared here, and just because these games are on our list, personally, all the games on my list... I don't necessarily think are completely terrible. They are just the worst games yeah, I've ever seen. <laughs> and they're the ones that I can actually for consider me, games. Yeah, for gonna... me it's a lot more like mix. Like the first like five or six games I would say aren't necessarily like awful. But then like once I get to the bottom of my list, eh, it's not good at all. Yeah. I'll, I'll just say that. I that's think, kind of how I feel. Yeah. I think most of these, but, yeah. there are good aspects uh, on my list. There are good aspects. But yeah. I think there's maybe only... No, I think I, I actually consider all of these a bad game the more that I think about it. But yeah, so uh, we're going to jump straight into it. I'm going to start us off. My number 10 is a game I've actually reviewed on, not on Mask Reviews, but on Why Does This Game Exist? Uh, Strider. And this kind of broke the rules of that series because a lot of people like this game. A lot of people call it one of the best arcade games ever. And then I played it on my Genesis Mini, and I played it on an arcade uh, version as well. And I just cannot understand why people even like this game. I cannot. Uh, I find it, sure. the controls are very awkward in my opinion. Yeah, I actually haven't game. played this game before, fun fact. <laughs> yeah, I think it, it, it has some interesting ideas. You're, you're, in, um, you're in Soviet Russia, I believe, but it's like a high-tech version of it, and you're a ninja, mm. so it has a very interesting Wait, what? kind of premise. It's not, not yeah. anything, I've never seen a game like this. I've never seen a game where you're in you know, the Soviet Union in a thousand years as a ninja. That's never, that's not common. That's not that genre. Cool. Yeah, so that's unique. Especially because, yeah, was it released in like the early 90s, like right before it collapsed? Oh, yeah, I'm pretty yeah. sure, yeah. Yeah, I'm not completely this sure. This makes it even meant. weirder. <laughs> yeah, I'm not completely sure it's meant to be because like it has... It's just the Kremlin is what really stuck out to me. I remember the Kremlin is the background of the first stage, and then you go to, like, a tundra in stage two. So it's very clearly huh. Russia, and I'm pretty in Yeah. Here. So I'm, you know, it's very unique in terms of, like, the style of it, but the controls are terrible. You can easily get wiped out by any enemy because the invincibility frames are pretty much non-existent. And the cutscenes make no sense, and the design is just really bad because you have to make a bunch of tricky jumps, and it's really annoying because you can either jump straight up or already be moving and do like a cartwheel jump that you can't change in midair. So you have That's awkward that horrible stuff, you know, like L Jan games on the NES. You have that horrible momentum that just kills it, and it's just it's really bad. It's one of the most overrated games of all time, in my opinion. But yeah, so, now, if you'd like to go ahead with your 10th most hated game of all time. Alright, here we go. My number 10. Walter, I'm sorry. Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity. This game. I feel, like, different on all the time. Like, this is, like, I, I always feel mixed about this game. But specifically, like, the stuff that I hate, I, there are moments of the story that I cannot stand. And I know that this is, like, such an easy criticism of the game, given that, like, just kind of the trailer showed it as a prequel to Breath of the Wild, when it's not that. 
and that like did make me a little bit upset but it also makes it like once you realize um in one of the last few levels like what's going on it kind of makes the rest of the story like super predictable which also like reduces the tension which kind of blows because tension is fun especially in warriors games and especially considering that this is a warriors game that's so like chaotic with what's going on and i think that that's also another problem that i have with it is like the chaotic repetitiveness i suppose um hyrule warriors definitive edition and basically every single warriors game has repetitive elements that's kind of what makes a warriors game a warriors game but in this game it just keeps happening especially with the boss fights like you will continually refight the same bosses over and over and over again and it's just it's not entertaining for me personally like it can be some people's things i know it's walter's thing but <sighs> it's it's yeah. just not not always for me <laughs> You know, yeah, I can I, hear him breathing heavily. <laughs> I can think. Um. Anyway, but I, then. Oh, oh, go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. But alongside that, um, there's also things, like just, kind of with like how some of the characters move. That kind of troubles me and how it works. Which is like, may sound weird, but it just means that like some of the characters aren't a lot of like fun to play as and i just i guess like it when there's a large cast of like people that i i want to play as i suppose okay uh, yeah well so you number nine talk about what you said real quick so i actually was considering for this for my list um hyrule warriors definitive edition because oh, i actually no. I hate that game i think no. it's I th what you said about the repetitive nature of Age of Calamity, I think that's there somewhat, but I think a lot of the stages in Age of Calamity, you know, you have runic attacks, you have the scepters that you have to use the elements on uh, when, you know, like, uh, for example, if you're dealing with an ice uh, whiz rope, you'll yeah. have to use fire. Sure. You have to, you have all these different things that you can mix with the enemies and you interact with the enemies in this very dynamic way. And that's really why I liked it. Like when I played Hyrule Warriors, uh, definitive edition, and then I heard about Age of Calamity, I was so mad because I really wanted a prequel to Breath of the Wild, but then Correct. I learned that it was a Warriors game and that really annoyed me. But then I saw the Treehouse showcase. Because you don't like Warriors. <laughs> yeah. I, well, I yeah. mean, I've only played Hyrule Warriors. But, you know, from my knowledge, they're very repetitive. You're just hacking away at tons of small enemies. That's what you do in most of... Uh, yeah. I think my issues. biggest complaint, like, with it, though, is that it's mostly the bosses. Like, the bosses are super, like, repetitive in nature. Like, I'm fine with the enemies being, because, like, that's part of the fun with it. I mean, kind of, like, when the bosses don't have anything unique to them, I think that that's where I get kind of troubled with it. I think the main thing about the bosses that's for me that is good for me is that they aren't really bosses because you don't have one per stage. You have multiple per objective. So you have to take yeah. down multiple Lionels at once and they continue to... It, for me, it's not... With the basic enemies, it's about... And the mechanics, it's about constantly changing things and making it more complicated. With these stronger enemies, bosses, if you'd like to call them that... It's more about making it more challenging, and I felt that was really good that they had a gradual ramp in difficulty. Because in Definitive Edition, when I got to Stage 4, the first three stages got through, no problem. In fact, they were way too easy. Stage 4, I could not do. I tried over and over and over again, could not do it, because there were two giant enemies that took forever to take down, and you had to take them I down remember in the what same time limit. I believe it was, there was like a sandstorm going around, desert ruins, and there was a sandstorm. I barely remember. Oh, this Fruit of the Valley? Time ago. I think, maybe. But it was just so annoying. And when I played Age of Calamity, you know, obviously the music's great, the art style's great from Breath of the Wild. Oh, yeah, Wild. yeah. I, I love the soundtrack of it. There's... There's pieces that are just, like, super, like, action-packed and epic. Yeah. There's themes that make me cry, and then... Yeah, and, the I whole think, thing. and I think about the story, it's obviously not that good, like, compared to other games, you know? 
I don't think Nintendo yeah. really does a good job ever with stories, ever. Mm. Uh, like, I mean, the, you're... <laughs> I mean, the only really times out. I think they do well with their stories are in Zelda. That's like the one yeah, that's true. place you can get that. That's what I mean is... And that's why I Breath love the, the series so much. <laughs> Breath of the Wild is like... The story is very simple, and a lot of people hate on it. I find it good for what it is. It's not trying to be the next uh yeah, I don't and know, I definitely kind of you know, oh, I love Breath of the Wild. <laughs> I love Breath of the Wild. Yeah, it's my second favorite game ever. But you know what's my eighth no, favorite it, or uh, seventh favorite game is Age of Calamity and uh, you know that's because it's just I think the challenge is good because of those larger enemies and I think the smaller enemies help it give give it variety. So that's why I really like it. And about the story, the last thing is uh, yeah, it's not great, but for what it is, I really liked it, and I felt the voice acting was way better than Breath of the Wild. And there are actually some really sad scenes in there, especially with Zelda and yeah, her that... father. Those were really good. True. So yeah, I think the characters were also pretty strong. So that's why I actually like that game, but I understand. Um, so then my number nine is The Legend of Spyro, A New Beginning. Now... The oh, you hate a Spyro? Yeah, I hate a lot of Spyro games. There's another one on here. Oh. <laughs> I love Spyro. Spyro is amazing, and especially the first three. Uh, especially the first two. I'm not the biggest fan of the third one, but one and two are mm, very good. The third one's pretty good, too. The problem, though, is after that, we hit a slump of games that people don't really care about or they completely despise. You know, the Game Boy games, those were pretty good. But then we hit yeah. the point where no one's no one cares about Spyro anymore or they hate him because they ruined the franchise because Universal is terrible and they just gave it out to companies and made them fit, you know, go into extremely tight deadlines and it's a whole thing. But then they try to revive the series. So what do they do? They do a gritty reboot of a kid's game, because that's always a great idea, and they give us Legend of Spyro, A New Beginning. Now, Legend of Spyro Eternal Night is to many far worse, far worse, uh, but I've never played it, so that's why this one's on here. Now, uh, to give you a little idea of what my personal history with this trilogy is, I played the third one, Dawn of the Dragon, and in my opinion, it is amazing. The music, the visuals, the puzzles, the combat, it's all great. It's, if you want to make a mature Spyro game, that's how to do it. It is simply phenomenal. But then I decided, okay, if that one was so good, the first one must be. And I heard that the second one was terrible, Our so fight. I didn't want to play that one. Uh, no, it is repetitive, difficult as all hell, uh, just annoying, cringy, monotonous. Many people hate on beat em up, beat em ups because they're monotonous. Let me tell you, you don't know what that word means until you've played this game. It is seriously so boring and repetitive. And once you get to the Ice King, not the character from that, uh, the cartoon, uh, no, the character from this game, Ice King, the boss, I just couldn't get any further and it's ridiculously hard. And I, I just was so disappointed because the third one was so good, and then this one was just complete trash. But yeah, so now if you'd like to go ahead with your number nine. All right. Well, um, I guess I was going to do an epic transition being like, okay, so speaking of cute things that turned, like, not so cute, I guess this doesn't really count as that, but... I guess I'll just say it. Ratchet and Clank 2016. All right. So this game, <laughs> this game is like weird to me because um, I got it, I think middle of last year, or maybe it was a few months ago. I'm trying to remember. It was like free for like PS4 as the like, the like event. Yeah. Right? Do you know what I'm talking about? Play at home. Yeah. Yeah. Play at home yeah. with uh, Horizon Zero Dawn. Mm -hmm. Or yeah. So like, that's when I got both of these games, and when I got Ratchet and Clank, I was like, oh, like I'm, I'm going to be super excited. I was told a bunch of like really good things about it, and when I played it, I just didn't really see it, I guess. The game kind of starts, at least to me, in a very like 
mediocre way of just kind of like, hey, here's our main character. They're going to go through like this challenge, which works as like a fine enough tutorial, but then like it moves in to like the clink section. And it just like wasn't fun. Like not playing as Ratchet in this game just like wasn't enjoyable to me. And even when you're playing as uh, Ratchet, it's just like, it feels, I guess you could say repetitive, but I don't really think that that like hits it. I think it's more so like, it just feels like you're doing something that's supposed to be like as fun as I was hoping. It's really hard for me to describe my hate for this game, like without like, I guess you could say playing it, because I just don't like it. <laughs> So, um, how much have you played of it? So, I've played, like, the first, I want to say two or three hours, mm. give or take. But, like, yeah, not, like, ten point. The beginning of the game is weak. Uh, in my opinion, that game is, like, fine. Yeah, I really liked it when I first played it, but now that I've gone back, the story is weak. It's not very good at all. Uh, it take scenes from the movie that was actually better than most people say the movie and puts them into the game and it makes no sense and it's bad um yeah the story yeah, I is think bad. That's what like. and i think the the thing about it is like the start is boring but i think like this is your first ratchet and clank game right all right what uh, uh, correct. Did yeah. my Wi-Fi shut out there? That's sad. I, I, I thought you said all right, sorry. Um, all right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. As your first Ratchet and Clank game, it's not good. Uh, but if you're familiar with the franchise, you'll understand that, like, the basic gameplay of it gets eventually really addicting. The thing about it that I like most is the exploration, because you get a lot of cool planets to explore and it gets a little more charming it is one of the weaker titles i've yeah. played in the series though so i think if you want to play a good one play rift apart there you go or if you want to get ps now play uh, a crack in time those are my two favorites the exploration is incredibly rewarding and satisfying. I've 100% of them both. I've also 100% of the 2016 one that you're talking about, but it's way shorter and it's less fun. It's very basic. It's very bare bones. You know, the weapons aren't satisfying to use. You know, yeah, the, the story is basic. It was basically just done as a movie tie-in game, but it does get more fun as you progress. So I think if you play it more, it'll get more fun. But if you still don't really like it that much, then don't count out the rest of the series because it is the most... It's everything about Ratchet and Clank put into the most simple, marketable product possible. That's what it is. Yeah. But yeah, so I'm... I think I'm scared of getting uh, Rift Apart just because I actually have to turn on my PS5. Hmm, that's kind of a problem. Anyway, <laughs> uh, what is your number eight on this yeah. list? Okay, you might not like this. I don't know. I don't know. I haven't heard anyone ever talk about this game. Pokemon Mystery Dungeon on the 3DS. I hate you know it. know that this game <laughs> I have played this, and I played the demo for the original remake. The remake that they did that everyone on, forgot Switch. about. Okay. Yeah. And they're both yeah. terrible, in my opinion. They're both annoying, linear. Ooh. They don't have any interesting mechanics. They're repetitive, boring... They don't have any of the charm that makes me like Pokemon. I like Pokemon because it's like, it's fun, but it's not all too challenging. It's like a simple game to just make your way through. That's all it is for me. It's not anything yeah. spectacular. I, I kind of think of it as, yeah, like a child's turn-based RPG, I suppose. Yeah. And I think and, it works with that. But I find it better than a lot of others that I've played that I don't like because it's not trying to be yeah. super hard and it's easy. It's easy and simple, it gets to the point, and that's all you need. Pokemon Mystery Dungeon is damn near impossible. I could not beat this. I could not get past, like, the first level on either of these. They are just relentlessly difficult, annoying, boring. Just everything about Pokemon that is good is not here at all. So yeah, if you want to go ahead with your number eight now. Alright, well... <laughs> so, I guess mine isn't really even a 
like in a franchise, but my number eight is the ignition factor. So this is kind of, I want to say like a fireman's simulator for uh, the Super Nintendo. And it just doesn't feel like a Super Nintendo game. Like, I think one of my biggest problems is the game constantly like shows you more or less like a mouse cursor. In other words, meaning it was made for PC and they just kind of ported it over, which especially makes it annoying because it would have been really easy to just make it work with the D-pad. But as well, with the game, the gameplay just doesn't feel intuitive, I suppose. Like, you go from floor to floor trying to rescue people who are, like, stuck underneath fire. But, like, at the same time, you have to use, like, specific gadgets and make sure that you're, like, saving everyone, I suppose, without, like, burning yourself to death. Which, like, explaining it out loud... Like, it sounds like it makes sense and might be a little bit of fun, but the gameplay just, like, doesn't work in your favor. The hit detection feels random. I think at random times, I'll just, like, start on fire, and it's like, what? But then, at the same time, uh, the, like, refuel thing on your, like, I guess you could say extinguisher isn't... I I don't want to say it goes down too fast, but it does. (laughs) And it also just, like, leads to a lot of places where it's basically impossible to get into them. Either that, or you have to be extremely, extremely precise with your timing. In other words, it's extremely hard to get to. And also, there are a lot of times where you'll use one of your extinguishers that takes, like, forever to refuel. And then, like, there's just nothing there, and you just wasted your time. And yeah. honestly, it just it's just not fun. <laughs> like I think my my bare minimum for a simulator game is for it to just be like a little bit charming and just like have fun gameplay. And this had neither. Yeah. And I it hate just that game too. feels like I don't know. And also like graphically it just doesn't, like, scream, like, Super Nintendo to me. Whenever I think of the Super Nintendo, I think of really nice and beautiful, like, colors with a lot of, like, fun and flair to it. But in the case of this game, it doesn't really feel like that. I don't really want to say it feels like a NES game, because it doesn't. It has, like, enough color. But it just, like, doesn't feel, like, as nice as a lot of other games on the Super Nintendo, or even on the Sega Genesis. Yeah, I I hate that game as well, mostly just because of how slow you move and how tedious it is to even get around. Um, yeah. So yeah, so I'm going to go ahead with my number seven, and this is another hot one, hot off the presses. I don't know if you've heard of this. This is a PlayStation classic, uh, and I hate it. Oh. And even though, you know, I'm, I'm a die-hard PlayStation fan, so I should love this. I love Spiral, I love Crash, but I hate this. Medieval. It's horrible. It's horrible. I've only played the remake, so maybe the original is so much better or something. It runs poorly, the loading times are abysmal. The game looks cool, I guess. The charm is certainly there. The exploration's okay. But it's mechanically basic. The hit detection is awful. The the combat in general is just the worst. That's my number one complaint. That ruins the whole experience. It's all about attacking enemies. But you just swing your sword around and you there's no way to block from getting hit. Because they can just destroy your shield in seconds. Especially when you get to the scarecrow level. It is literally impossible. Because there are no invincibility frames. So they just drain your health immediately. It's awful. I I just lem- I rue the day I ever bought this game for twenty bucks. It's a waste of money. But yeah, oh, wow. so if you'd like to go ahead with your number seven now. All right. Okay. So quick and simple. I guess this one's kind of a self-explanatory one. At least if you have played the game, my number seven is Sonic 3D Blast. And this game, I believe, is the first 3D Sonic game. Can you confirm that, Walter? Mm, uh, I... Well, 
It's not technically 3D, but from an isometric 3D angle, yeah. I guess the first okay. 3D Sonic game is technically... Or, I believe Sega Sonic the Hedgehog came first, and that also had some 3D... Uh, that had an isometric angle, that was an arcade game. So I think it might be that, but for, for home console platformers, yeah. Sonic 3D Blast, alright. Okay, brief history of Lesson Oak. Anyway, uh, Sonic 3D Blast is just, like, it's confusing. I'll, I'll just, like, put it that way. I'm not entirely sure what I'm supposed to, like, be doing in the game, because mostly, like, Sonic games, or at least the main ones that I've played, it's just, like, linear, like, get to the end of the level, maybe fight a boss if they feel like it, but... In the case of, like, this game, like, you have to explore all around, try and find, like, places to, like, I guess get to the end of the level, but it's not really as clear-cut as that. As well, the controls feel really, really awkward. Like, for an isometric uh, game like this, I think the number one thing that it has to have is controls that are, I want to say, stiff, because, like, being too slippery... Especially in this, where you can, like, barely control what's going on. Because, again, you're using the D-pad of the Sega Genesis. It just feels weird in this game. Because it is slippery, and, like, you do kind of fly all over the place. As you normally would as a super-fast hedgehog. But, I don't know. This one just, like, isn't fun to me. The spin dash also feels really, like, awkward to pull off. And... Uh, I, don't, I don't really have, like, a super, like, well-thought-out reason as to, like, why this game is, like, awful to me, because similar to, like, Ratchet & Clank, it's just not fun. It's it's just weird. <laughs> so... I think that that's the best way to describe it. So, I think... Well, I gotta say, for, so far on your list, I don't agree with the first two, but I definitely agree with oh. the ignition factor. Uh, and I do kind of agree with this one. I don't, th I don't hate this game, but I don't like it. Uh, for me, it's definitely in the middle. The first few levels are, like, fine. Like, I'm able to get some fun from it, but it's just not entertaining after that. Yeah. I don't hate it. I don't think it's, like, one of the worst Sonic games ever. Because, trust me, the ones I have on my list are really bad. But, I also um, have a play. The, that many in the Sonic franchise, so it could. Yeah, good, because you don't want to play some of the ones that I have on my list. But I'm I think, go six, here we come. Oh, I don't, I have never played that one, so that's not even on my oh, list. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's how bad it gets. Um, but yeah, I think Sonic 3 Blast is, like, very heavily flawed. I don't hate it, but yeah, I'm not a fan. So yeah, and then I'm going to go ahead with my number six, which is a Sonic right. game. Sonic oh. Unleashed. It's oh. horrendous. Now, I have to say, the levels where you're platforming as Sonic are actually some of my favorites in, so in the Sonic franchise. I like them more than Sonic Generations, to give you an idea. I, my, uh, I don't, I'm not the biggest fan of Generations, personally, but I do find it very enjoyable for the first half. Uh, it's not yeah. better than Colors, but Sonic Unleashed yeah. has some of the most enjoyable Sonic stages ever. But, it also has the Werehog, which not only is dumb, but it runs at three frames per second sometimes, no joke, like I'm actually... No exaggeration, there was a point where it was literally running at like five frames per second for a while there when I was playing it. And I was playing the PS3 version, and the PS3 is supposed to be the most powerful console of the time, so, you know. Uh, and that's on the Wii. <laughs> yeah. I think... The Sonic Unleashed is just annoying, because it's so good at first, but then the Werehog is some of the most annoying stuff I've ever played, and the town exploration is also just so cringy. I hate Sonic Story. I hate Sonic Stories, that's, that's the thing. Sonic Adventure kicked that whole thing off, and I hate it. Whenever Sonic tries to take itself seriously with a story, it's always horrible. Always, always, always. Yeah, Colors and generations weird. are more colorful and fun. 
and that's perfect. Yeah. But then I think have part this of the thing that I really like about Mania is that it just went back to like Sonic barely having a story at all. Yeah. And that also just kind of made it more fun. <laughs> yeah, this is just trying to take itself too seriously, and it's cringy and horrible. So yeah, if you'd like to go ahead with your number six now. But I will say beforehand, when Sonic has a bad frame rate, it can be absolutely detrimental. Yeah, Sonic. Spoiler alert, we're going to get to that later. Anyway, my number six is Star Wars Battlefront 2. And I can basically sum up like all of my complaints with this game by just saying the word EA. Because yeah. they completely ruined this game. Like, it is filled to the brim with what you could say are mobile game tropes of tons of microtransactions, um, just, like, not Eat having boxes. a fun campaign mode. Like, the campaign mode feels so, like, stripped down, and also yeah. the, AI, the AI on it is so funny. Like, it's ridiculously bad. Yeah. Like, they did update it to be a little bit better, but it's not, like... Like, there, there's times where you'll just, like, see characters just like walking around and shooting at you at all and then there's also times where you'll be hit by something off screen that you couldn't even see or there's something that like hit you through a wall and it doesn't make sense and also the glitches in this game are very abundant yeah but yeah i think my biggest problem with this game again is like ea just infesting this with their ea-ness to make it like Basically, it's like to give them more money, which it's not fun. Just make a $60 game and just end it right there. No more money. Yeah. <laughs> but just like as well, the campaign mode was super disappointing and there could have been a lot more to it. The story also takes itself like really seriously when it doesn't need to at all. Like it's a Star Wars side story. It should be really like cheesy, but... Yeah. It's not really the case, and yeah, this game just is a mess, and well, I do find some of the, like, arcade game modes in it to be kind of fun, and if you just, like, completely ignore how, like, you're only going to be winning in the online component if you, like, pay for stuff, if you completely ignore that, then I guess this is, like, a fine enough game, but still not good. It's hard to, like, pinpoint this game for me, but I'll just say that EA is not a good company, and this is one of the worst games that they've made. Yeah, I have barely ever played an EA game because I know that they're supposed to be awful. Uh, I have played the Star Wars... I've played a little bit of Star Wars Squadron. So far, I really like it. And I've played the Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order that I don't really like. Uh, and I've played Rocket Arena. Those are the only EA games I've ever played. Uh, and... I I just, I know, I've heard so many things about those, this Battlefront games, especially Battlefront 2, that just make me never want to play them. Um, one interesting thing, I'm not going to name it, because that would spoil the surprise. Um, one of the people in talks to have a console conversations episode in the future, um, is going to include Battlefront 2 on a list of favorites something and they love that game so that's that's a little interesting that might that might mm -hmm. cause a little little anger but yeah <laughs> okay so my number five is final fantasy one i've never played a final fantasy game besides this one okay so weebs don't get mad at me because i've never played final fantasy seven <laughs> i've never played eight i've never played 10, 2, 5, 6, 7, 8, Kingdom Hearts, spinoff, whatever. The names are so convoluted. Whatever. The, I, never play, I haven't played the Fortnite ripoff, because they're literally <laughs> doing a Fortnite ripoff uh, to flesh out the story of 7 Remake. Um, which And the story of that game I hear is really bad, too, so that's not great. Of 7 Remake? It's not yeah. like... It's just unfinished. I wouldn't say it's bad. It's just, like, it, it needs a second half to flush it out. I guess I it, it's bad if you haven't played the original. Two halves. I, I will say that. Like, it's bad if you haven't played the original. I anyway, think, uh, go on. <laughs> so, I think the 
first Final Fantasy, so this is the only Final Fantasy game I've played, and what a way to start. Uh, the, t the combat, I'm, I'm just going to say real quick, because there's not much to say. The combat is tedious and boring. It takes forever to take down the first enemies of the game. There's nothing special about it. It's just one of the worst games I've ever played in my life. It is so tedious, so boring, so annoying. Just overall, complete garbage. But yeah, so if you'd like to go ahead with your number five now, you can go ahead. All right, quick and simple. Um, I guess I'll kind of try and do the same. My number five is the kind of recently released, I think three years ago from now, uh, Kirby Star Allies. And this, to me, is like one of the most like mediocre, play it safe, like short, just not fun games that Nintendo has ever released. Like this game uh, just... It's around four hours long, which normally I might be fine with. This was released on, like, the NES or SNES, but this is, like, the Switch. Why is there only four hours of, like, content in the game? It doesn't make sense. And also the game is ridiculously easy, which makes sense given that it's a Kirby game, but it just makes it so much more dull. Like, there's nothing that like, makes any of the sieges memorable, it doesn't make the game more enjoyable, that you can just breeze past everything. It just feels basic. And also the, like, um, friend edition thing doesn't really add as much to the gameplay as you would hope, and just kind of leads to this game just, like, feeling... I don't really know how to put this. It just has, like, a bad taste in my mouth after playing this game. And it's just... It's also not something, like that you can go back to either. This game doesn't really have replayability, and while they did add, like, stuff through updates that I didn't care about, it just didn't, like, help this one for me at all, and Nintendo's, like, free update gimmick was really starting to get dry by that point, so I think that was also another criticism that could be thrown at the game. Overall, this game is just so, like, play it safe, and I think that that's what makes me upset about it is that it could have been one of the best Kirby games and said to me it's one of the worst just because it I don't know it just doesn't like try anything yeah I am I'm not the biggest fan of Kirby personally and this one just makes me like the series less overall okay but you got to consider you know how you're complaining about the four hours well lesson you can you can spend sixty dollars on uh, four hours from Nintendo themselves, or you can go on the eShop and buy Celeste for twenty dollars, and that'll give you um, forty hours. Yeah, complete ripoff. Okay, yeah. And also okay. a really fun game. Yeah. It's on sale for five dollars occasionally as well. Would highly recommend. <laughs> Here are two. Anyway. Two e -shop, real quick, two eShop games I really recommend that aren't made by Nintendo that you can get pretty cheap. Lego City Undercover. I don't, I'm not very familiar with the Lego series, but this is an open Lego world City game. Lego City Undercover is so fun. Yeah, this is an open world game with a ton of cool mechanics, and I yeah. like that. That's like my favorite thing. That's my favorite type of game. And Sayonara Wild Hearts, I've talked about it before, uh, but please play it. Please, like, it's just, it's so, it's so good, and it's not that expensive. I think it's, like, $9, and it's so stylish and creative, and the music is so good. Just, just please play it. That's all I ask. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead with my number four. This is going to ruffle a few feathers. Sonic Adventure 1. If you like this game, I hate you. No, I'm just kidding. But if you like this game, <laughs> something is probably wrong with you. Because this is legitimately one of the cringiest, most annoying, badly designed platformers I've ever witnessed. There is one that's worse. Uh, and that's on that, that's at number two for me. But um, at four, we have Sonic Adventure 1. Voice acting is terrible. Modeling is terrible. Glitches all over the place. Terrible level design. Terrible hub world design, terrible story, confu confusing level design. Either they're so linear and simple and glitchy that it's not even fun and rewarding, or they're way too open and massive and you have no idea where the hell you're supposed to go. It's a train wreck. I don't know how anyone can defend this game. And the sequel, ha like the first level of the sequel, City Escape, is pretty awesome. But after that, it's 
literally just as bad as the original, so I don't want to hear anything about Sonic Adventure 2 either. So yeah, there you have it. I hate Sonic Adventure 1. So if you'd like to go ahead with your number 4 now. Okay, what I will say about Sonic Adventure 1, the voice dubbing on that game is, like, to the next level. Yeah, it is it's really funny. so comedic. <laughs> I, yeah. I think the only thing that I like about Sonic Adventure 1 is, is that I can just laugh at it at the end of the day. Like, it's... Like if you that's... don't have to play it, if, if it was just yeah, the cutscenes, then it'd be, it'd be the greatest comedy ever made. But sadly, there's <laughs> yeah. a game in there that's so tedious to go through that it's hard to even enjoy it as a joke. Yep. Alright, so my number four... Super Mario Bros. The Lost Levels, a game that was exclusive to Japan for a while. Part of me wishes it just stayed there, because this game is not fun. It is very cryptically designed, with lots of sections where you're just supposed to find invisible blocks and then move on, or sections where you have to find the right path or just run out of time and worry about it later. Um, this game was... Also, or I guess also another criticism of it to unlock all of the levels, you have to play through the entire game eight wow. times without using warps, meaning you have to play through every single level <laughs> eight times, which just isn't fun because the game is just so like cryptically designed with like how things are like placed as well, like. There are some, like, platforms that, like, if you miss, like, one jump, you're probably just gonna die and hope for the best. Um, as well, this is, like, something you'll notice right at the beginning of the game, but there's uh, a new, like, mushroom that you think, oh, this is gonna be fine. But no, it's a poison mushroom that just kills you right away, even though it looks so similar to the original. Yeah. And then, as well, uh, this game doesn't add anything. Like, you can't go backwards in levels. The only new power-up, if you even want to call it that, is just something that kills you. Or just, like, minimizes you. Um, the only new, like, mechanic to it is the, like, new wind mechanic. Which is so inconsistent. Like, sometimes the wind is, like, crazy and chaotic. And, like, you're not really sure, like, what's gonna happen when you jump in the air. But then sometimes it's super calm, but the wind always looks the same, so it's really hard to judge. Which, again, just leads to more trial and error deaths. Honestly, like, I cannot play through this game without just, like, throwing down my controller. This game just isn't fun, and unlike the original, like, there's not, like, the, like, classic charm to it. I can't see anyone liking this game even back when it released in the 80s. It's just not good. Yeah, I think... But... The thing is... Hmm. Yeah, I get it. Like, I don't really love this game. But there are some stages in there that I find kind of enjoyable. And... Beating it, it's not that bad. The thing is, if you have the rewind feature that NSO provides, then it's actually oh, kind yeah. of enjoyable. But if you were playing this back in the 80s, then this would have been one of the most frustrating... To quote my, one of my favorite YouTubers, it is the first ever troll game. The, the <laughs> poison mushroom, the dead ends that make you kill yourself or start from world one. It is just so annoying, frustrating, and badly designed. Even though there are some good levels in there, so yeah. Alright, so now we're getting down to the nitty gritty. My number three. Now this is going to win the award for most obvious pick of 2021, but here goes, Superman 64. Now, I have played games such as Hong Kong 97, and Shaq Fu, and Crazy Bus, and Desert Bus. So, I'm familiar with bad games. But have you played E.T., though? I have, and it's actually not that bad, in my opinion. Yeah, 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 I know, I know. No one's gonna agree with me on that, but it's not, it's not as bad as the other ones. Why aren't those anyway. on my list, though? Because they're not games. I don't consider them games. Crazy Bus is a literal, literally, you just drive a bus across a flat image of another bus while terrible sounds play in... 
<laughs> Blow your ears off. Hong Kong 97 is... It's more of a joke than a game. Uh, the opening title screen to that game is one of the most one of the funniest things I've ever seen in my life. It's the only Super Nintendo game I've ever seen that curses. On the first thing you see in the game, they say the F word, and it, the story is hilarious. It's hilarious, but it's not a game because. You die in one hit, you shoot white orbs at people, uh, you're supposed to kill 1.2 billion people because they're communists. Uh, so it's really, really the best video game story of all time. Uh, you know, Naughty Dog, just get out of here because Happy Soft has you beat. So to give you an idea of the games that didn't make the cut, those are those games because they're not games. Superman 64 is an obvious one, but it's still a game. It's still a game because you know there are there is content there is kind of a plot there is there are objectives it's a thing it's a game, but it's a terrible one. You fly through rings. You deal with annoying controls. You deal with horrible glitches. You, it's just I can't even give it just do it justice because everyone's everyone else has already told you why it's so bad, but it is really that bad. So that's why it's my number three. But if you'd like to go with your number three now, you can do that. Um, I haven't actually played, like, Superman 64, but I have seen a lot of, like, gameplay of it, and it is so funny. Like, the controls are so, like, whack, based on what I've seen, and there's, like, right after you run through run through rings, oh my goodness, or I guess not even run, fly, but, uh, then you have to, like, grab a car within, like, two seconds or something, <laughs> and then if you fail, you have to restart and go through the rings again, but, yeah. Anyway. My number three is Fantasy Star 3, Generations of Doom. And this game is a... It's a complete mess. Like, this is probably... Actually, no. I take it back. This is the worst turn-based RPG I have played in my entire life. The story, like, the bare minimum, and I mean the bare minimum you have to do to make a good turn-based RPG, is have an intro story... That makes you want to go through what can be considered like slog combat because kind of like more modern turn-based RPGs have made uh, the like combat a lot more fun. But in the case of this game, it's not fun and there's no reason to like keep going through it. Basically, the game starts and your character is getting married and then some person that you don't even know kidnaps your wife. And then the king yells at you, and then you're in prison, and then you're not in prison, and then you're off into the open world. Like, that's... What? I, I can't even explain it, because, like, it doesn't make sense. It just doesn't work. And then afterwards, you're just supposed to figure out where to go? I think one of the funniest tropes about uh, turn-based RPGs from the late 80s and early 90s is that they always have these giant open worlds that you don't know where to go in. And this is, like, also common in a lot of the early Final Fantasy games. But, like, in the case of this one, the story is so, like, weird that it also just doesn't make the gameplay any fun. And the gameplay is super basic. You only have one attack. You can get spells, but usually you'll only have one and again, most of what you're doing is just grinding because you have no idea where to go. And you're interrupted pretty much every five seconds. And it's just not fun. Like, this is one of the games that on the Sega Genesis Classics on Nintendo Switch, I basically have to hold the ZR button the entire time to put it in fast forward. Otherwise, this game is just like... I guess otherwise I'd probably just continuously be aging while even trying to get through just one of the battles in this game. Yeah. But yeah, this this is like the worst style that you can get for a turn-based RPG in my opinion. Yeah. Oh, and also, graphically, graphically, this does not look like a Sega Genesis game. I, it looks like an NES game, to be honest. Like, it just oh. doesn't look good at all <laughs> yeah okay 
so now I said this before, but now it's really getting down into it. My final two games are games the rest that I named I hate. These last two are ones that thinking about them hurts me to give you an idea. So let's just start off. So number two, my my second most hated game of all time is Spyro Into the Dragonfly. You know, the game that I made a like, I think, seven minute video uh, of me literally just beating with a hammer and cutting the disc with scissors and snapping the disc in half and hitting it with, you know, anything I could find. Yeah, just destroying the game. Because it's really that bad. After three great like games, fun. it just is... The loading times are ridiculous. The game looks like garbage. Well, some people say it looks great. It doesn't, trust me. It looks like garbage. Just look at the opening cutscene. It's the stuff of nightmares, those visuals. The music is mm, pretty okay. Stuart Copeland returns, and that's really the only good part of it, the music. The sound effects are non-existent. The stage designs are bland, boring. The glitch glitches are everywhere. It's just an unfinished game. It's not a game that I vehemently despise in every way, because like I said in, uh, I think, my Alien 3 review, I don't hate games or movies that are bad because of constrictions, budget, you know, budget limitations, yeah. any kind of time limitations, and that's what this was. Universal made Check 6 push this out as fast as possible, and it could have been okay if they had more time, so I'm not blaming the developers. But the end product is abysmal, and that's why I hate it. And it's just a game that I have so much pain with, because I played it, and I was so excited, and it was just so disappointing. So yeah, now you can go ahead with your second least favorite game of all time, basically. Alright. So, similar to, or similarly to what you just said, I also made a video about this game, actually fairly recently, but... This game is Sonic the Hedgehog 4, Episode 1. And I'm just going to make this as brief as possible. Graphically, this game looks super whack. Like, control-wise, this game feels slippery and just, like, weird. The homing attack oddly works and doesn't work at the same time. The first two levels are probably some of the most, like, baseline, mediocre Sonic levels I've ever played. And then the last two levels, I'll, I'll spare one thought. The third level is basically a ripoff of Labyrinth Zone, just to show you that the developers really wanted to make this game bad. And then the other one is a ripoff of Metropolis Zone, which is just not fun. I think the laziest thing that you can do in like a 2D platformer about Sonic in order to, like, I guess you could say, die is like to have you, like, I don't really know how to put it, basically die by being crushed. And that's basically the only way that I've died in this game. Because it's so commonly, because it so commonly happens, and it just feels odd. Like, it's not something that should happen so often. In the case of uh, Mad Gear Zone or the Metropolis ripoff, it happens all the time. And also, this game suffers from random enemies that you won't that you won't see. Um, occasionally, especially in Mad Gear Zone, there will be uh, random spikes that will just show up out of nowhere and hit you, and you lose all your rings. And hope for the best. Um, there's moments where you'll get hit by a spike and then just fall into a pit and die, even though you had no control because of the knockback from getting hit by something. And there's just a lot of moments in this game that feel so cryptically designed and just not fair. Like, this game isn't necessarily incredibly challenging, but, like, when it is challenging, it's not challenging in a way that's fun. And yeah. that's basically the biggest problem with this game, is that it's cryptic, but it can also be way too easy. And as well, just, like, Graphically, it's nothing special. Story, whack. <laughs> and also, like, the boss fights, some of them can be really easy, and then some of them are the labyrinth zone. 
boss where basically either you get crushed or you win. So have fun. But yeah, that's that's the gist of it. This game isn't good. Like I I have nothing more to say. <laughs> There's yeah. little to nothing I like about this game. Yeah. Okay, so my most hated game of all time, my least favorite game ever that I've ever played, is Heavy Rain. I made an almost 19 minute video talking about why I hate this game, comparing it to a bunch of other stuff. So I'm not going to go into a bunch of detail, I'll just sum it up very quickly. Uh, the graphics are horrendous, even for the time. The music doesn't fit with what's going on at all because it's trying to all. It always sounds sad. So then, when it's actually trying to be sad in terms of the story, it doesn't really make any impact on me. The sound is terrible. The voice acting is terrible. The animation is terrible. The story is contrived, annoying, and stupid beyond belief. The gameplay is boring uninteresting and wildly outdated and it's not like i hate that style of gameplay because it has been done well in other quantic dream games but here it is so boring there's nothing interesting going on even through even if you can say oh you yeah, you cut your finger off how's that not interesting well guess what i don't want to ha have to sit through three or four hours that feels like 20 hours to get there because it's so boring, so uninteresting, nothing's going on. It is just one of the most mind-bogglingly stupid games I've ever played. And I don't understand how anyone can say that this is amazing. I have not really met anyone else who hates this game as much as I do. And I really don't understand how this is a critically acclaimed game at all. If you want to pick a game like this that should be critically acclaimed, I guess Detroit Become Human. I think that's a good game. This is one of, this is probably the worst game I've ever played, in my opinion. But yeah, so now if you'd like to go ahead with your least favorite game of all time. All right. So my number one may sound like a bit whack, I guess. But this one is like, like, I, I've hated this game since like, getting it. I, I think I got this game around launch, like a while ago when I was like, just just a kid, and this game was bad. This is Lego Marvel Super Heroes Universe in Peril on the 3DS. And that is because this game just... How should I cut this? All right. Biggest complaint about this game. This game is incredibly cryptic. There is a live system in a Lego game. If you fail a mission, then you have to restart all the way over again. There are no checkpoints. This game is, like, based on, like, a three-star, like, mechanic. And if you don't get enough stars, then you have to replay the level all over again. The combat just feels wrong, I guess, is the best way to describe it. Because auto-aim doesn't exist here, even though it does in almost every other LEGO game. <laughs> and as well, like, um, commonly with... Things that I've, like, mentioned earlier, you'll get hit by something off-screen that you didn't even see, which is a problem when you consider if you get hit three times and there are no, like, hearts to regain anything, then you're done. Like, back to the, back to the hub world, or not even a hub world, just a level select, and just select it again. Hope for the best now. And also, the music is completely forgettable. I can't even remember a single track in this game. Um, this game doesn't have the Marvel fan service that you would hope for. And it's also, like, really disappointing considering, like, on Wii U, this game is actually a lot of fun because it's nothing like its 3DS counterpart. And as well, LEGO has, like, done this before where the handheld and, like, main home console are different because, obviously, power-wise, they can't be the same... But previously, like, they had ones that at least had an infinite live system and at least had, like, a tiny hub world instead of just a basic level select. They tried something new here, and it failed. This game is not fun at all. And it's easily, like, the worst game that I've ever played. And, well, maybe. I haven't played, like, enough, like, really bad games. 
this is certainly the game that I hate the most. There is there's nothing I like about this game. I'll I'll just be affirmed there. <laughs> there's nothing I like about this game. Yeah. But yeah. Okay. Well, <laughs> thank you guys for joining us on this episode of Console Conversations. Uh, the next episode will also be a, another collaboration video. Thank you for joining me, Noah for Life. Be safe, everybody. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.